Welcome back everyone. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to short sell a stock on Fidelity's web platform. Now, in the event you haven't seen my video explaining short selling, I will link that down below. I highly recommend you, you watch it first so you understand the risks associated with short selling. Your losses when you short sell are theoretically unlimited. Now, before you can uh, short sell on Fidelity, you need to enable margin trading and you have to apply for this. If you're not familiar with margin trading, basically it gives you the ability to borrow against the equity of your account holdings in order to uh, continue purchasing stocks. Now, I don't recommend you borrow on margin, but Fidelity requires you to enable this because when you short sell a stock, they have margin requirements. What this means is, let's say you want to short sell $1,000 of a stock, they might have a margin requirement on that stock of 30%, meaning you need to be able to cover up to a 30% loss should uh, you have to buy back the stock later at a loss. So if you short sold it for $1,000, you're paid $1,000 uh, by, by selling a borrowed stock, and a margin requirement of 30% means you might have to potentially cover your losses and buy it back uh, for $1,300. So Fidelity just wants to make sure that you, you can do this. This is what my Fidelity account currently looks like. Right now, I'm only actively trading in my Schwab brokerage accounts. I'm trying to build up this account. So very soon I can start a new value investing series where we'll be reviewing and uh, picking individual stocks. But for right now, I'm just 100% in VTI, Vanguard's Total Stock Market ETF, and I only have $37 worth of cash in my account. However, that doesn't matter. Because I have margin enabled, uh, we're gonna be able to short some stocks today. But I want you to take note that I only have $37 worth of cash uh, in this account right now. So to trade, we're gonna go up to Accounts and Trade, and then click on Trade. And this is what Fidelity's trade ticket looks like. I think it's pretty nice for margin buying power. Uh, I currently have 14,534. Once again, that doesn't really matter because we're shorting today. Now, before we actually short something, I'm gonna show you what happens if you try to short something that you can't short. So let's enter in GameStop because that's kind of the, the hot news right now. And we're gonna go to sell short quantity one, and we're gonna do a market order, and we're gonna see what happens. And this is what happens. Your order to sell short cannot be accepted. The security is either ineligible to short, there are currently no shares available to short, or there are insufficient shares available to meet your request. Because there's so much volatility with this stock right now, and so many other people have borrowed from their broker, borrowed from Fidelity, Fidelity literally doesn't have any shares to borrow you, or to loan to you, that you can short sell. So uh, this, is, this is the error message you might see on certain securities that are in demand to short. But let's go ahead and look at a different stock. Let's do American Airlines, and you're gonna get a different, uh, different um, error message uh, for, for, for some stocks. So we're gonna go short sell one quantity at a market order, and we'll go ahead and preview this. And this is what it's gonna tell you. The security you are trying to sell short is hard to borrow, not impossible, just hard, and requires that you pay interest to establish and maintain the position. So what, what I mean, uh, shortable shares, 19 million, that's, that's, where they're, that's when they're getting low, 19 million shares. And the effective interest rate is 0.75%. That is minuscule. If you're confident that American Airlines is going down uh, and you want to short sell, paying that 0.75% to your broker, it's, it's, it's not a lot of money. But let's get serious and short a stock that we actually can short. Uh, let's do, as an example for this video, Bank of America. I don't have anything against Bank of America. I've done no quantitative research to see if the stock is going down. I'm just doing an example for you guys today. So action, sell shorts for fun. We're gonna do 10 shares. Now, if you were actually short selling, I highly recommend doing limit orders. This is when basically you're saying, once the price goes up to a certain point where I feel like it's overvalued, short sell it then. It then uh, ideally reverses the trend, goes down, you buy back to cover your position. However, I want this to actually execute for this video, so we're, gonna, we're just gonna do a simple market order to make sure it occurs. All right, 
Let's go ahead and, well, actually, let's look at the dollar amount. This is the estimates. It hasn't executed yet, but it's estimating that uh, the price is $297.90. I am not paying $297 to short this stock. I will be paid $297. What's happening here is I'm borrowing Bank of America shares from my broker. I'm borrowing them for, from Fidelity. Where does Fidelity get these shares from? Well, they have lots of mutual funds and ETFs that hold these stocks, and they are happy to loan them to their customers uh, because, uh, because when they're hard to borrow, they do make money off of it. So when people short sell stocks, Fidelity can make money this way. And I am borrowing 10 shares from Fidelity, I'm selling it on the New York Stock Exchange. I sold them, they're gone. And somebody on the, new, on the free market uh, is gonna pay me $297. So let's go ahead and review the order. And here is a review of the order and you'll notice that for the commission on the trade, $0. Two years ago, this trade would have cost like five or $10. Uh, we'll go ahead and place this order. Okay, the order executed and I'm now back on my positions page. First thing you'll notice is that for Bank of America, quantity, negative 10 shares and Fidelity puts a little S next to it for uh, short sale. And I currently have a debit amount. I am negative 10 shares of Bank of America that I have to buy back at some point in the future. Now, when we look at the cost basis, $29.80 per share. That's what I paid, or no, that's what I was, that's what I was paid for short selling Bank of America stock. And ideally, what I want is I want Bank of America stock price to go down. If it goes uh, below $29.80 per share, when I cover my sale and exit my position, I'm buying them back on the New York Stock Exchange, ideally for less than what I, I was I, I received. So I received $297.99. If I can close this position and buy back 10 shares on the New York Stock Exchange for less than this amount, then I get to keep the difference. I get to keep the profit. That's, that's short selling. So I don't want to be in this position any longer than I have to be. So let's go ahead and close this out. We're back on the trade ticket and we're going to enter in Bank of America action we're going to buy and it doesn't give me uh, a quick option to cover my short position with Schwab there's like a hyperlink where you can say just cover my cover my short position but I know oh it says right here owned negative 10 shares oh there it is the hyperlink to cover all and we're just going to do a market order you could do a limit if you wanted but I want this to execute right away so we'll go ahead and preview order Estimating 298 and 10, I have no idea if that is uh, above my cost basis. We will find out. Okay, on my positions page, you'll notice that Bank of America is now gone. Let's go ahead and see if I lost money on that trade. So under activity and orders, you can see what everything executed at. And it looks like when I bought the 10 shares, it was filled at $29.80. I then had to cover my short position by paying uh, 29, or I was paid $29.80. I then paid $29.81 to get out of it. Multiply it by 10. I lost 10 cents by doing this example, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like in Fidelity's web platform. I, I, I think this is a good experience. I think compared to Vanguard, it's better, but not quite as good as Schwab in my opinion. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. In addition, consider checking out my entire playlist on investing with Fidelity. I've done numerous tutorials and I've explained their products and services. If you have any questions or comments, let me know one down below. I love hearing from you guys. Until the next video, take care.